Greetings, fellow Earthlings, and welcome to Tales from the Hoop, a podcast dedicated to diving into the weird, wild, and wacky stories from basketball history. I'm your host, Ricky Freck, and today I'll be sh- and today I'll be sharing several stories about Orlando basketball to my brother, Matt Freck. And so the reason that we're doing Orlando basketball is this podcast was originally scheduled to be recorded live in Orlando, Florida. Uh, Unfortunately, I did not have enough room in my carry-on bag to bring my microphone, so it's coming to you a bit late and also not from the hot, hot shores. Is it a shore? Orlando's not a shore. Orlando's not a shore. The hot, hot middle of Florida. We were Um, about an hour away from any shores, I believe. Well, the shores of uh, Disney. The lake shores. Lagoon. What's their lagoon called? Uh that's Toon, Toon I, I thought it was called paradise island and then you guys were talking about <laughs> paradise island is something different oh yeah that's the, and that's then the diddy the... video came out and I, you know oh, okay whoa we're gonna go there okay so we can uh, cut that. wow <laughs> wow um i'm a little flustered i wasn't i wasn't ready to talk about p My diddy bad. and My a bad. thousand bottles of baby oil but here we are um yeah so this one is a little bit, I don't know, I'm going to say nicer than the other ones that we've done. I should, well, they weren't bad, but this one is definitely like more family friendly. Nothing crazy going to happen in this one. Um, a little, I guess a little bit of like tangential racism, but we'll get there when we get there. You know, that's kind of old the school. par for the course for the old school. Uh, actually, it's not that old, really. I think the oldest we go is like 1985. So okay. you're going to know. Go ahead. You're going to know most of these players. You're going to ask, when does Orlando become a franchise? I believe it is the year after I was born, 1989. Oh, wow. The Heat were formed in 88, and then the Orlando Magic came the next year. I could have that backwards, but I think that's true. I know it hasn't been great in totality, but, I mean, they got Shaq very early. That's that's very impressive to have uh, Hardaway and Shaq that early, like, should have been Hard- set up for oh very long time. So stupid. I was like, they didn't have Tim Hardaway, Penny Hardaway is here. Penny talking Hardaway. About, yes. My bad. Um, yeah, they had Penny Hardaway, Shaq, they had Nick Anderson, never forget. Uh aka Brick Anderson. Do you know that story? I don't I don't know anything oh, about Brick he, Anderson. They were I don't remember the team. Um, it was I think it was the Rockets in the finals, nineteen ninety five. Uh the Magic had a chance to win the game. Nick Anderson goes to the free throw line. He's a 75% free throw shooter for his career up to that point. Bricks two free throws, gets his own rebound, gets fouled, bricks two more. The Magic lose. They go on to lose the series. The next year, he shoots 45% from the line. Yeah, it's over after that. That's a Ben Simmons (laughs) career killer right there. That's tough. Ben Simmons before Ben Simmons. Yeah, so today we're going to look at at least two, potentially three, depending on time, stories from Orlando's history. To be fair, one of them is also kind of one of them is also kind of heat history and then another one is also kind of nets history if we get to the last one. Uh but the first one is definitely very focused on Orlando in my opinion and ta- and it's going to talk about one of one of the most fun teams in basketball history. Uh you probably don't know very much about them, but we'll get there and it all starts with a little guy and I say little, he's he actually is little. He's 8 inch shorter than I am. Dar- Darrell Armstrong. Do you know anything about Darrell Armstrong? Uh, he was on one of the NBA hang Don't time say magic. games. Okay. Yes, probably. No. Yeah. No, that's that's it. That's all you know. Played yeah. it, played as him on a hang time game before. I, there was. I got to be a stickler because it is the industry I work in. There was only one hang time game. Oh, that's there it. Was wasn't a bunch there. Of, NBA Jam is that there's a bunch of jams. Okay. And Hang Time is the home version of NBA Jam. I believe, don't quote me, but I think that's the truth. I think it was only came out on home consoles. It was like the that year's NBA Jam. It was the version that came to consoles. I think and that's Jam true. was only arcade? At the time. Oh wow. But now I think that's but then later I think it came to other to consoles, just like Blitz, right? And hits and yeah. Uh I'm thinking the of the the SNES version. Oh yeah, yeah. That's hang time. Hang time is only yeah. on SNES and whatever the equivalent Sega system is. I believe. I don't know. No. Well, I'm sure a lot of people knew. Video game journalists, what? Good for something. 
A lot of people would disagree with you on that one. Um, all right. So Darrell yeah. Armstrong's story starts in, hopefully, hopefully this is correct, Gastonia, North Carolina. And I mean, hopefully is in the pronunciation, not the um, the city. I know, I know the city. Uh, and also, I'm a little nervous because I forgot to look up one of the main players in one of this story. But we'll just get there when we get there. If I pronounce it wrong, everyone would get mad at me in the comments. They often do. Uh, the six-one youngster's first love was football. He punted and played wide receiver for his high school squad and didn't pick up a basketball until his senior year. In fact, Armstrong went to a D2 school in Fayetteville, Arkansas, where he joined the football team as a walk-on. Okay. He played there in 1986 and 87, kicking two school record 48-yard field goals. So this guy was a not prolific, but relatively good kicker, punter, good with his feet. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, surprising what happened later. You would not yeah, expect it. does not it. sound like an NBA career kickoff in <laughs> any way, shape, or form. Ah, kickoff. Look at you with the puns. It's like you're British. Uh, <laughs> so the one thing about him, though, is he was uber athletic and a very hard worker. Actually, that's two things about him. I apologize. In 1988, he joined the high school or he joined the school's basketball team and played for three seasons under head coach Jeff Capel II. And don't get it confused. I know as an Oklahoma sports fan, you might be thinking about Jeff Capel, the OU fan, or OU coach. This is his dad. Uh, do you, did you even know that Jeff Capel coached OU when Blake Griffin was there? No. <laughs> I, I couldn't name a single OU coach ever. Uh, you Really? Well, what's the guy? Not, I'm not gonna, we're not going to get into that. I think it's Lon Kruger, but I don't know for sure. There was there was a guy that was there that got in trouble for like text messaging, meaning text yeah, messaging that, who? that's worth defining. Um, he was like it was part of the NCAA rules to not text recruits or something like that. Okay. And he was like he like sent too many texts to high schoolers. It, oh, okay, okay, now again it's it's coming back to sound weird, but we've all he been en- there. He we've all sent up- too many texts to high schoolers. Oh boy. <laughs> Um, he speak of P Diddy. Oh God. He, he ended up coaching somewhere else at, later. He's, he's pretty prolific. I think. Yeah. Jeff I, Capel, I can't, I, I'm pretty sure that's Jeff Capel. Just okay. so you know, um, he averaged 16.4 points, uh, and won the 1990 CIAA slam dunk contest and was named a first team, all CIA play CIAA player in 91. Winning a dunk contest. That's a really good way to, not really be good at basketball, but then, you know, you get like some clout attached to your name and then, you know, parlay oh, that yeah. into. Yeah. Like yeah. Zach Levine. Got it. <laughs> oh, Sorry. No. I'm, I'm a big Zach Levine hater. Oh, um, no. I have a friend who's a Bulls fan and I complain about Zach Levine all the time because I think he is not trash, but if, if Zach Levine is your best player, you should just tank your whole season because you know he needs he needs to be like the third best player in your team. He, I would argue he's not their best player, or, or there hasn't been the last couple of years. It's been oh, because Demar, yeah, yeah, but he is their best player right now. Well, yeah, unless you're sadly. unless you're a big believer in Matas. Sadly, uh, a lot of people are big believers in Josh Giddy, so who knows? He might turn it around. A lot of high schoolers turns out. Oh man, shouldn't have gone there. Okay, shouldn't have gone there. Uh, Okay, so as you might expect, the small guard from a small school went undrafted in 1991, instead joining the Atlanta Eagles in the USBL. His energy and tenacious defending led to him making the league's all-defensive team for three straight years, and he was a first-team all-USBL selection in 93 and 94. So, pretty solid little guy. I don't know why I said it like that. Pretty solid player. Not too bad. Uh, during that time, and this is this is kind of crazy to me. I mean, I, I guess it's similar to like the WNBA where they don't play a lot of games so they can go play overseas as well. Mm. But he he also played in the CBA, which is Continental Basketball Association, and GBA, which is Global Basketball Association. Oh, boy. Uh, so he was together. playing in like several different leagues. And then he also went back to his hometown of Gastonia to volunteer as a he- assistant coach for his high school basketball team and worked the night shift at a yarn factory. Okay. So, so wow. He was a hustler. He was getting busy. Um, we should bring back one of these basketball leagues and go kind of like XFL. Like, really try to shake up the rules and get into the personalities of it. Do you, I mean, okay. Is the, do you mean like the, the do you mean the old XFL? Because the new XFL, they don't really do that so much. Uh, yeah. 
sure. Okay. I didn't watch the new XFL, so I'm not sure of okay. the well, there, differences. There, I feel like the new XFL, I mean, the, the, the original XFL did like actually uh, invent a lot of stuff you see in modern football, which is kind of crazy to think about, especially, especially with like presentation you know about all this my speaking to the choir here the the cameras and yeah. stuff like that yeah and showing I mean, the cheerleaders the, a lot yeah the new kickoff like didn't the new xfl do that first oh did they really i you could I think be so. you could be cor- tre- correct on that um yeah but yeah, i definitely think there is something missing like obviously we don't want to go full wwe but i do feel like we need some more personality in sports not after that vince mcmahon docuseries <laughs> came out yesterday <laughs> yeah but uh i don't know i just think like, I don't know. I, I am a fan of taunting. I think taunting should be more allowed. Yeah, is that a, is that, is that a bad take? I also think that, and I guess this would go, uh, it wouldn't go hand in hand with our league, but a lot of players like lose their personality when mm-hmm. they get good because they're scared of what's going to happen in the media, but yeah. we would want to amp it up. And so we need to get like alternative media. I don't know how to say that, but we would try to figure out like I want Kyrie to be full Kyrie, you know. Well, I want I, okay. I want Kevin Durant mm-hmm. and the burner accounts. I do want that. I don't know yes. if I want Kyrie to be full Kyrie, but I do <laughs> want a league full of Anthony Edwards. Like, if if everybody acted like him, I mean, it might not be as good if they didn't all act like him. You know, like the one guy, maybe he just stands out more. But he's so funny. Oh, I love him, and I also love Jokic. The way he just like doesn't care about basketball. He just wants to go bet on horses. Yeah. That's a vibe. I agree. Every day I have to work. I'm just like, I wish I was betting on horses and he could do it. He's so rich at this point. He could just retire and he's already, he's already like a top 25 player of all time. Like what's he, he's done. He doesn't need to get it. There's a very that. likely chance that it happens earlier than we think it should. I, I would do it tomorrow if I were him, but you know, that's me. I'm, I don't want to work ever. So anything I can do to get, get to finish it off and just be like, okay, I made enough money. I'm done for the next, hopefully, 40 years. We should move our tax home to Romania and see where that gets us. We're not going to become the Tate brothers, okay? We're not doing that. It's not happening. Uh, okay, so back to Daryl Armstrong. Uh, we have <laughs> taken this off the rails enough. Uh, that will pair that willpower eventually led to him signing a contract to play in the Cyprus League, which... I don't know if you know if Cy- that Cyprus is a country. It is. And they yep, have a league. With a U, not an ESS. Whoa, look at you. Yep. Spelling champ. Uh, spell. Oh, no. Now I can't tell the joke. <laughs> okay. What is it? Eurydoseclitis. Um, yeah, I don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> he averaged 32 points and eight assists en route to winning the league's player of the year. Oh, wow. In 94 95, he joined the Spanish Liga ABC, ACB, excuse me. And average twenty. They re, why do they do that to me? And average twenty four point six points a night to claim the league's top scorer. Then, after five years of grinding in the lower levels, Armstrong finally got a shot when the when the Orlando Magic offered him a contract. So a very weird route to the NBA that really doesn't happen anymore. I don't feel like you hear about guys going and playing overseas if they didn't start overseas and then coming back. Yeah, unless, I mean, the only, I think, equivalent is like one and done. It's like they go, some yeah. guys, you know, want to get paid. And so they'll go. Oh, yeah, okay, and, I see what you're saying. But, I mean, not very often. Now that there's like, I think it's probably done after NIL and the G yeah. League and all that stuff. But I mean, Dante, I guess like, Dante I about, Exum is the guy mm, I'm thinking of. I was about to say, Dante Exum, I think he left and then came back. And I could see, uh, what's the guy from Chicago? Not the Bulls. He's like born in Chicago, played at Duke, uh, the same year as Wiggins. He's playing for Barcelona right now. He played for the Bucks before they got, like when they got Giannis. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Oh my God, it's going to drive me crazy. Okay. Um, but yeah, he was going to be a very big deal. And then he Randall? got several... Randall. Julius Randall? No, not Julius. <laughs> he plays for the Knicks. He got drafted by the Bucks. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Um, Didn't he get drafted by the Bucks? Could have been. But no, this guy was like, he was like a can't miss prospect. Like him and Wiggins were one and two. Larry Sanders, Brandon Jennings. Larry Sanders is no, neither of those guys. This guy's like a, he plays power forward, played at Duke. Oh my God. I know everything about him except his name. (laughs) 
Anyways, let's keep going. Maybe I'll think of it later. Um, was he at the very top of the draft with Wiggins? Yes, he was the number one or two pick. I know it's not Julius Randle. Or no, maybe three. That, like, uh, man. it's Yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. And for some reason, that player in my head is Julius Randle, but I know that that's not. <laughs> it's definitely not him. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. He went to the Lakers. Oh, that's, yeah. The Yes, that is correct. He Yes, <clears throat> Julius Randle did get drafted by the Lakers um, when they had Lonzo. Uh, who also is not playing. He can't even stand up out of a chair, I heard. Um, oh, no. <laughs> over his... That's actually that's from Skip Bayless, and also I think that joke's like a year old. So uh, over his first two seasons, Armstrong played a total of 16 games, but he was asked to participate in the 1996 Slam Dunk Contest. That's all so it takes. So you're thinking, here we go. He's going to show out. He's going to have a great dunk. Going to put his name on a national stage. He finished in last place after accidentally completing a reverse layup on a dunk attempt. Kenny <laughs> Smith Yikes. called it the worst dunk in the contest history. <laughs> oh, no. In his third season, though, Armstrong came off the bench for 60, 67 games. The next year, he started 17, but it was the 98-98 season, 90, yeah, season that he truly broke out, winning most improved player, and six men of the year after averaging 14 points and seven assists. And after that season, the magic cleaned house. Obviously, Shaq had already left, but they got rid of Nick Anderson, Penny Hardaway, and even Horace Grant. Those guys were all shifted out, and Orlando brought in rookie coach Doc Rivers. The team was looking to tank and spend big in free agency the next summer with names like Grant Hill, Tracy McGrady, and Tim Duncan potentially on the market. Armstrong wasn't having it. Oh, no. No. Uh, so, do you know that, right? That story that Tim Duncan almost went to the Magic? In I do know that story. What I don't understand is they, so they give up on Shaq, which wasn't it rumored that it wasn't, like it was pretty minuscule, the difference in money that the Lakers offered him. I think that's but the, true. But the Magic know. just refused to offer it. I think that's true, but I don't know for sure. And then they decide to go crazy in free agency? Like, a few you years already... later. I mean, that was five years later. Oh, okay. That's fair. Um, And they also, we'll get to it in a minute. But Sucking they're... for five years will really <laughs> open up the coffers. I think, I, so I think they thought that they didn't, not that they didn't need Shaq, but that they already had Penny and Nick Anderson, and then that they could bring in a guy we're going to talk about in the second story mm. to, quote unquote, take the place of Shaq for a little cheaper. Uh, not going to be as good, but um, he's de he was decent. Anyways, um. Back to Armstrong's story, the now veteran guard used his trademark energy and athleticism to lead a ragtag group ragtag group of players to a 41 and 41 record. So 500 ball. Uh, they were supposed to be the worst team in the country. They were picked to lit win less than 20 games. And somehow this guy helped get them up to 500. Uh, okay. He averaged 16 points and six assists while playing with guys like Ron Mercer, Chris Gatling, and I think this is supposed to be John, and I spelled it Jam for some reason. John Amechi. Let's hope it's Jam. <laughs> Maybe it is. Uh, the Magics, the, the, those Magic quickly became known for its interesting characters. Much like Armstrong, uh, Bo Outlaw, he was on, team, on the team, didn't pick up a basketball until late in his high school career. Um, he'd been a swimmer until making the switch, and just like Armstrong, well, similar to Armstrong, had to grind through the CBA before finally getting onto a team. Okay. That team was also anchored on defense by, can you guess? Was it the player replacing Shaq? He played that. No, he played there for one season and one season only. Which year? Drafted, drafted by the Wizards, 2000. Uh, the, very, bust, he's a very the bust guy? Very famous player. No, not a bust. Elton Brand or? <laughs> no. Uh, who's that? He was drafted, drafted by the Clippers. Who's that? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, a young Ben Wallace anchored oh, the defense in his only year with the team before joining the Pistons and going on his incredible run of yeah. winning four of five defensive POIs. Should be five of five, I will note. I was looking it up as I was writing this. Oh, no. Ron Artest at the time, now oh. the piece, won in the third year oh, of that no. run. And every stat Ben Wallace has is better, except for steals, where he is like 0. 0.3 below Ron Artest as a center. So he should be below him. Yeah, I think there is probably like a 
Derrick Rose winning over LeBron thing there where like yes. cuz he did he win it in the middle. Yeah. Yep, see they get voter fatigue, they give yep. it to, like a perimeter guy and then it's like oh that was stupid, we should keep giving it to Ben Wallace. Yeah, it's just like how Kareem should have like 10 MVPs if LeBron we're just going... also should probably have Well, yeah, true. Fair 10. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the team also had five foot five Earl Boykins played there for a single game. Uh, rookie Corey Maggette was trying to make a name for himself in the league. And while the team did miss out on the playoffs by a single game, it was quite the accomplishment for a squad that many assumed would be the worst in the NBA and a testament to Armstrong's incredible drive to su succeed. So I just really like this team uh, and how like weird they are that they actually yeah. like did well. Um, and, but then there's another part of, Dar Darrell Armstrong. This is a very quick little story okay. uh, that I think is very funny. And um, I'm going to say some things that no longer are appropriate. So Before you move on. Yeah. Is Earl Boykins the shortest player in Ooh, NBA history? I don't know if like Spud or Muggsy or there's another guy that I'm not thinking, can't think of his name are short. He's down there though. But he's down there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I have a theory now. It's, uh, it's some book I read somewhere. Maybe uh -huh. that it's adversity is like the number one thing that matters as to how good someone's going to be at a job. Okay. It's like not, not how good are they? It's like, Dang, how, I should be really good at my job then. It's like, how bad were they? And then how far have they come? Yeah. Or if they were generational, did they become even more generational? Yeah. And it feels like all these guys just met up with each other and they were all, you know? Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, for sure. Because Ben Wallace also like, yes, he's like six nine, but for a center at the time, six nine one crazy. That's small. Yeah, that's pretty small. You know, you, a six nine guy going six nine like two fifty going up against Shaq at seven two three hundred and forty pounds or whatever that man weighed. That's he's like insane. six of me. Um, it's like when Dr when Draymond was saying that they could guard Shaq, bro, and Shaq's like, how? It's like <laughs> there's no way. The Dr Draymond and Ben Wallace are basically the same size, dude. Shaquille O'Neal would Michael Doliak, uh, Draymond Green all day long. There's no chance. Draymond would be nobody if Shaquille O'Neal was in the league. He'd have no. I shot. wonder how many MVPs Shaq would have if he stayed on the Lakers and stayed in <laughs> stayed shape healthy. and cared about cared about basketball. Dude, he would be. It would have been crazy. He's so. He's kind of like. Uh, I mean, it's not exactly the same, but he's relatively similar to like Randy Moss and like God-given talent and ability mm. compared to like desire to like actually be the best where like Shaq is just on another level but because like Randy Moss nowadays would not be as impressive as he was then right mm -hmm. because now you have a lot of guys like Calvin Johnson uh Jefferson Jamar Chase like that you know people have like grown you know as athletics and as training and eating all that stuff gets better and better players are gonna get better and better but back then Mount he was different that guy was, yeah. it was crazy. You know, like, cause you see, I mean, this is, we're getting off topic a little bit, but you see like catches now. Remember that Odell catch? And yeah. like people lost their mind. I feel like that happens every week <laughs> in like college. I'll see some same catch like every week. And that I was like, like the greatest catch yeah. of all time at one point. I feel like Odell kind of wrote, rewrote the book of like, I can, if I just make this with one hand instead of two hands, yeah, someone will see that. And like the views on Twitter matter more than the actual game sometimes. Yeah, for sure. I'm just saying. All right, so let's do this last story, and then we're going to take a quick break uh, because Zoom wants us to stop. Um, so after that, Armstrong played through the 2008 season, hopping to several teams after leaving the Magic in 2003. Uh, his mo This is where we talk about like tangential racism, but not really. Mm -hmm. His most notable moment might have been in 2005 when he was playing for the Maps. A few hours before a game against the Timberwolves, the Redskins had whooped the Cowboys 35-7. to seven. Ahead of the game, Armstrong, a Washington fan, grabbed a microphone and yelled, how about those Redskins? To the crowd and players, uh, he was fined $1,000. <laughs> it's worth it, in my opinion. Um, and then, uh, but, you know, hey, look, in 2009, he joined the Mavs staff as an assistant coach, helping the team win the 2011 title, and he still works there as of 2024. So oh, wow. it wasn't that. that bad of a deal. Yeah. Um, okay. He made up with the city of Dallas. <laughs> yeah. Happy yeah. for everybody. I didn't get too mad at him, but I'm sure he's not invited to Jerry World very often. Uh, 
All right. Uh, yeah, we probably, yeah, we pro- we'll cut here and we will be back in one second with at least one, potentially two more. I think we're gonna have time for both. Um, the, the second one's short. The third one is short, I guess I should say, but yeah, so we will see you in a second, unless you have any final words before we take a break. I'm good. All right. Roll the ads. All right, we are back with the rest of the Orlando saga. Uh, and next, we're going to talk about a guy named Ronnie Cycli. Have you heard of him? Do you know anything about this man? I've never heard the name Ronnie okay. Cycli. All right, so he was born in Beirut, Lebanon, and he lived there until he was 10 years old. That year, he moved to the United States and attended boarding school in Massachusetts until 1979. At that point, uh, he moved to Athens, Greece, where he spent the rest of his youth. He quickly became a star athlete at the American School, which is, I know it sounds weird, that's the official title of the school, the American okay. School. Is it like an embassy? or I that's think just it the must name. be, but I okay. don't know for sure. Um, he was playing basketball, volleyball, uh, they called it association football, but we all know it's <laughs> soccer and track and field. He is also, it- oh, go ahead. Is it like if I wanted kids to go to my soccer camp? Like, let's say I wanted my school to uh-huh. attract top soccer stars. I could say, like, the Barcelona Academy, even though it's not actually anything to do with Barcelona. I, I got to be honest. I didn't look up why, why it's called okay. the American School, but I'm going to assume you're correct. Yes. Well, so that's, a, that's the reason. Um, he also took up DJing. When he moved to Greece. So he was a 14 year old DJ and superstar athlete. Uh, when he was 16, he was noticed by a player from, and I'm going to mispronounce this. I apologize. Pathathinikos, mm. which mm-hmm. is a like club that plays soccer. They play basketball. Uh, but the youngster, which in, I'm referring to cycling in this case, went into uh, the pro players athletic store to buy athletic to buy new shoes so this guy who played for the greek team also owned an athletic shoe store and our guy walked in there bought some shoes and the guy was like dang you're tall (laughs) Um, and so based on the pros recommendation cycle joined the senior team and started to train with them oh perfect however he didn't have a greek passport so he wasn't allowed to play in any greek basket league games because the league didn't allow foreign players until 1988. So because he'd been born in Lebanon, he was not allowed to play at any of their like league games. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. But still he got plenty of training and he played in tournaments outside of Greece, which eventually helped the six eleven center earn a scholarship at Syracuse. He's only six. I mean, sorry, only six eleven. That's very tall, but I was just <laughs> thinking he was going to be, he said like a guy says you're tall. You should play basketball. I was thinking you're going to say, I don't know, seven, five. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, people say that about guys who are six, seven, they're like, Oh, you're tall. You must play that. That's true. I mean, they say that about six, four guys, depending on where you are. Have you ever met someone that that's happened to? What do you mean? So I actually have a friend that was just offered a spot on our basketball team because he was seven, seven. Who, what do you mean? Our basketball team? <laughs> Sorry. When I went to the university of central Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Uh, he, he actually went to high school with Buddy Heald, current okay. NBA player. Yes. And didn't like played as a freshman cause he was really tall and uh-huh. just wasn't coordinated or good. And yeah. so, and the team was very good. And so he's like, I don't want to compete with Buddy Heald. So yeah. he just quit and didn't play until he got to, uh, college. I remember I was at the, on stage because I we were doing like new freshman orientation, yeah, and I was on stage talking to the new students, and he was like sitting, you know, you couldn't even like, he was shoulders above everybody else, uh-huh. and I went and found him that day. I was like, "Have you ever played basketball?" <laughs> and he's like, "No, I no, like What's I quit basketball? freshman year." And then he like got to know some of the guys on the basketball team, and they were like, "You should come to our tryout." And then he just played for two years. Was he any good? No. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh. he like played sometimes when they needed him against the tall guy. A but big guy? Yeah. Yeah. Man, it did crazy. help him bulk up. He became uh, like, he was like 
rail thin and then he became yeah. like, you know, that's good at least sizable, but yeah. And just being tall. That's all it takes, it's, baby. It's a good that's attribute to have. Yeah. That's why, I mean, yeah, if you're tall, you got a chance. Uh, over his four years with the orange, uh, Cycli racked up stats, finishing his college career as the school's leading rebounder, second in blocks and fourth in scoring. I think he's been surpassed in most of, most of those at this point, but he's still pretty high up there. Um, he was also named to three all big East second teams and made the second team all American list in 88, which is quite the accomplishment for a center in the eighties, because that's when like Patrick Ewing, uh, yeah. Uh, Hakeem Olajuwon. There were a lot of good bigs at that point in time. So Parrish. even making, yeah, Parrish, Robert Parrish. He was in the eighties. I would have thought he would have been the night or the seventies in college, but maybe you're right. I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. College. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Uh, that same year. So 88, the year I was born, uh, the heat drafted. Oh, crud. Cycli with the ninth pick. I almost said, said it the way I thought it was pronounced. Um, <laughs> he was Miami's first ever college draft pick and the first player born in Lebanon to compete in the NBA. Uh, he's also, there's like almost no foreign players at that point in time. Like he's mm. one of the first guys. Okay. Uh, he was instantly a solid center, averaging 11 points, seven boards, and a block a night. His follow up campaign was even better. He averaged 16.6 points, 10 boards and nearly two blocks a night to win the most improved player award. Yeah. Uh, so there's kind of a theme here. Darrell Armstrong yeah. and this guy also both winning player, most improved player. Uh, let's see. He continued to be a solid center for the heat through the 94 season, but his most notable achievement during that time might be something he did for another player. Any guesses, any guesses in the early nineties, what might a guy have done for another player that would have been notable? Does that have anything to do with Armstrong? No. Okay. What do you do for another player in the 90s? Uh, is it player related or like of the times related? A little bit of both. Cocaine? Of both. Uh, no. Drugs? No. Okay. Um, He got... Daryl Dawkins tickets to Terminator to Judgment Day. It's a great guess. Uh, in 1992, Magic Johnson announced that he was HIV positive. Oh. Ahead of the season's All-Star game, there was a player outcry about Johnson playing in the February All-Star game uh, before retiring because many of them feared infection. Cycli had watched his cousin Robbie die from AIDS in 1986 after a tainted blood infusion and wanted to show the league and fans that HIV isn't contagious by touch. He said, I wanted Magic to feel he was one of us. Just because he was infected didn't mean he wasn't a human being. So, good guy, Ronnie. That's uh, way better than all the things I yeah. was thinking. Uh, about an hour before a Heat-Lakers game, Cycli walked up to Johnson while the guard was putting up shots to stay in shape, because remember, he wasn't like playing all the time, or maybe even at all. Uh, the big man challenged the legend to a game of one-on-one, -on -one, telling Magic, I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to take it easy on you. The two guys went at it for 30 minutes, which could be taken in a weird way, uh, as, teams and as teammates and fans looked on, helping ease the players' fears. So kind of a big part, not a yeah. big part, but a, a minor part in how uh, Magic Johnson kind of got over the stigma of being HIV positive, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah. But it doesn't end there. Uh, Cycli, and not I don't say that it's like it's going to turn negative. <laughs> None of these stories are, the last one's kind of negative. None of these stories are super negative. Cycli joined the Warriors in 94, but went back to Florida in 96 to play for the Magic. As I said before, Orlando was trying to replace Shaq and keep the good times Ooh. rolling with Penny Hardaway and Nick Anderson. And this, this part is pretty funny. Uh, you should look him up after this is over. If you're listening, you should look him up right now. Reportedly, assistant coach... Richie, and I, I'm going to mispronounce it, but I'm going to try. Adubato heard from another coach that teammates would hate Cycli because he was too pretty and would attract mm. all the ladies. That's right. Can't, it can't be too pretty. There's always there's always a like nine to ten. Yeah, you know, it's too also, pretty. I don't see it. I don't. I really don't. Oh. I don't. Not to be rude, but I don't oh, no. see it. Oh no. Uh, maybe. I mean, I'm. You know, who could say? We'll have to ask. 
someone that would be in the know. Um, the team played well, and they met the Heat in the first round, racing out to a two-game lead. However, Cycli got hurt in a game in Game Four and didn't play in the final two games as the Heat won the series three-two to advance. After that season, he was traded to the Nets and played 18 more games before retiring in '99. However, his career wasn't over, or at least his second career had started. Because remember yeah. how I said he started DJing back in Greece? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Cycli took that passion and started DJing around the world and ran his own Sirius XM station called Sugar Free Radio. He is also he's also been married to a supermodel and is currently married to a Brazilian fashion blogger. Cycli also speaks four languages, four languages fluently. I can't even speak one fluently and might be the NBA's version of the Dos Equis most interesting man in the world. I mean, sounds like he's got to be hot if he's marrying a supermodel. I don't yeah. see it. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. I don't see it. You you be the judge. All right. Dave and audience. We'll put a, we'll put a poll on Twitter. <laughs> All right. So this last story, you're probably going to know most of this, uh, but it's the other like big Orlando story I found. Uh, so we're going to go through a brief history of the Dwight Mayor and its many acts. Do you, oh, remember, no. do you remember the Dwight Mayor? Uh, I mean, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> was was there a mayor that was going on? Uh, yes, there was a mayor. Yeah, there was a horse involved. No, uh, yeah, no. Dwight Howard is just kind of a weird dude. Oh, in general, okay. Just, in general, yeah. Just so, the way that he was. Yeah. So the uh, this is a story in many acts. Uh, this is a very very abbreviated version. Um, but here we go. In November, and also I will point out as we start this. If you are one of those people that thought the decision by LeBron was a joke, just wait, because this is way worse. Uh, in November 2011, the NBA lockout was winding down and Dwight Howard had dreams of getting back to the finals. Okay. The Nets had signed his old friend, Deron Williams. They had moved to Brooklyn and approached yeah. Dwight about a deal. It was reportedly a three-team trade. That would have involved Gerald Wallace, Brooke Lopez. I've never been able to say this guy's name. Hito Turkaloo, is that correct? Yeah. Yep. And several first round picks. The Magic rejected it and Dwight was pissed. Teammate JJ Redick later said Howard was so sure he was headed to the, Nate, the Nets that he told teammates, quote, I love you guys. I'm headed to Brooklyn. Trade's going down tonight in the showers before the Magic announced their decision that they would end act two and not make the trade act one, excuse me, act one and it not make the trade. Oh boy. Uh, so <laughs> he felt he was out the door. Didn't happen. Man, the lockout. What a good season. <laughs> and honestly, I saw Dwight Howard play an exhibition that game or really? that year. Yeah. They were, it was shut down. The league was shut down and they were doing like a little circuit. Oh, like the drew league stuff. Yeah. Similar. Yep. They played in Oklahoma city and I mean, no one tried. Like LeBron was there, Katie was there, Chris Paul. Man. Um, so it was just like watching them throw alley oops to each other and stuff, which was fun. There was one player who tried very hard, had like 42 points, Dylan Brooks. 20, 20 some rebounds. <laughs> it's 2011. Oh. Uh, a highly drafted player with a lot of talent that never really panned out. Jabari if can, Parker. If you can guess. No, not Jabari Parker. <laughs> Michael Beasley. Oh man, the big looked bees. like MJ out there. I mean, Dude. he was dropping everything. He was also just the only one trying. So if he could stay Sorry. off the weed, <laughs> bees would have been a great player. Um, <laughs> but what was I going to say? I uh, forgot. The trade, the Nets, Dwight Howard. I don't remember what it was. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> dang, Act, I wish what he did what would, no, we'll just go because I can't remember okay. what I was going to say. Uh, Act 2 came a few months later at the March 15th trade deadline. The Nets sent along, because remember the trade deadline got pushed back that year uh, because of the lockout, so it was much later. And so the Nets sent along a relatively simple deal that would have sent Brooke Lopez, Marshawn Brooks, Mehmet Okor's expiring deal, and several picks to the Orlando for Howard. Dwight told the team, he told the Orlando Magic staff that he was uh -huh. going to opt out of his contract and pave the way 
to make a new deal so that the Nets would trade him and then he could sign with the Nets. Then, on the team plane that night, after a game with the Spurs, Dwight Howard was hanging out with his teammates and he decided... Remember earlier when he was so mad about not being traded to the Nets? He wanted to go play for the Nets so bad. And mm -hmm. he said he loved his teammates too much. He couldn't leave. I can't go. <laughs> Perfect. So he also didn't say anything to the Nets. He never told them he wasn't going to make the deal after saying he was going to. And when he was given the papers by the Magic front office to sign off the deal and say it was okay and that he was going to uh, get off his contract, all that stuff, he just didn't sign them. Hmm. And the Nets panicked after learning about that the next day. They thought Deron Williams might walk. And so they sent a first round pick to the port to Portland for Gerald Wallace, who was at the time a 31 year old aging wing player. Uh, that first round pick, could you guess who it turned into? Uh, which team? This would be for Portland in around 2012. Oh, Lillard? It was Damian Lillard. Yeah, dang. So Blazers fans are probably very happy Damn. with Dwight's second act. Yeah. Not many others agree. Well, at least not many other Orlando fans or Nets fans for that matter agree. <laughs> this is why we need a uh, NBA real. Sorry, this is why we need our our separate sports or separate basketball <laughs> league so we yeah. can put more cameras on these guys. But if you had a reality show that was following the best or top NBA stars around, you know, you'd get to see like what what conversation this happens a lot in like survivor the challenge those types mm. of reality tv shows where a person comes in confident and says oh i'm gonna vote in this other person and then they have one little conversation on the mm -hmm. side and they're like oh i didn't think about that and it throws it mm -hmm. and then everyone's like they voted for him instead <laughs> does someone like he do turkaloo pulled dwight aside and was said something, got in there and just thought, he's like, oh man, I didn't think about it that way. You're right. <laughs> My bad. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it would be crazy. I mean, they are doing that starting five thing on Netflix, but I don't think that's going to be oh, yeah. quite the thing you're looking for. Not enough. Um, okay. So remember that happened on March 15th, 2012 in June, June, <laughs> 2012 Dwight's team. And I don't mean the magic. I mean like his publicist and yeah, agent yeah. and all that stuff allegedly put out rumors that Deron Williams wouldn't sign back up with the Nets unless Dwight Howard was on the Nets. Mm. Yahoo, Yahoo Sports and ESPN both said that Williams wanted another star in Brooklyn and it had to be Dwight. Mm. The Nets denied the rumor, but did sp remember Dwight had just said no. Just, he just said no. Yep. And he was already, he's supposedly allegedly stoking these rumors. The Nets denied the rumor, but they did uh, speak to the Magic before finishing the deal that brought in Joe Johnson. Brooklyn told Orlando that they were about to dump the assets they would need for a Howard trade, but the Magic said they were good with what they had. No big deal. We oh, got gosh. this. Unfortunately, Dwight and his agent were not nearly as happy as Orlando. They continued to push for a trade to the Nets even after the ISO Joe trade. Reportedly, the Nets offered Brooke Lopez, Chris Humphreys, Marshawn Brooks, and unprotected picks in 2013, 2015, and 2017 for Dwight Howard, Jason Richardson, Chris Duhon, and Earl Clark. The Magic said no. Smash. Smash, yes. The uh, guy already wants to leave your team. I could be off on these. I, I tried to look it up, um, but it's kind of, you know, picks kind of got moved around a lot as they, as they always do. Uh, but I believe uh, that if the magic had just used those picks and picked the players they would have gotten, they would have had Mason Plumley, Kelly Oubre Jr. And Markel Fultz instead. Well, what? The picks ultimately went to uh, Boston, right? And they got Tatum and Brown. Because well, they so that, that's for... why I'm confused a little bit. You could be correct. That's why I was a little confused because I was trying to like map the picks out. Okay. And the Fultz one was a pick swap. Mm. So they swapped. I think it was the 76ers had the option to swap or the somebody had a swap with the Celtics and the Celtics used. I don't, it's, I don't know. 
Yes, it was very confusing. That's why I said I could be wrong. They could have had, I almost, yeah, I almost added that. It potentially could have been Jason Tatum. Um, I don't know for sure. Yes, I might be wrong. I probably am okay. wrong, but it doesn't really matter. Even though those players aren't that good, uh, they traded to they traded Howard to the Lakers a month later for, get this, Al Harrington, Aaron Afalo, uh, Vooch, and picks that later became Alfred Payton and Dario Saric. Saric. I always think about that trade because I remember that Howard went to LA, Bynum went to uh, Philly, yeah, Iguodala went somewhere else, and I'm always like, who did the Magic get? <laughs> like it's amazing that they traded the franchise player and arguably one of the ten best players of that At time. The time, yeah. And got no, nothing I can remember in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, and those picks that they used, those picks on, those were all protected picks. So some of them didn't uh, convey eventually. Ah, oh, brutal. So I get like again, like if if it was Tatum, it's definitely not a wash. But with those guys, it's kind of a wash. I don't. So that's why I'm saying like I don't know exactly how it. I couldn't track it perfectly. Yeah. Um, who they would have gotten, but either way, uh, you know, they put all their money on Alfred Payton. And that didn't work out for them in the long run. It um, did not. And like Vooch got okay when he was, he was fine there and he's decent enough for the bulls, but he's definitely not, you know, a Dwight Howard level player, at least at that, at that point in time. Um. All right. So the last thing about the Dwight mayor is that while it was over for the magic, it did not end for the nets uh, because on July 6th, 2018, I mean, this is this is kind of like a small, like a footnote. The yeah. Hornets finally sent Howard to Brooklyn in exchange for Timothy Mozgov and Hamadou Diallo. Uh, he was that. waived the next day in a move <laughs> to buy him out of his contract, letting him sign with the Wizards and freeing up space the team needed to bring in Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant the next summer. Dang. So they finally used him. And I mean, you can argue maybe Kyrie and KD didn't quite pan out uh, for the Nets, but you know. At least he made the way for something good to happen yeah. to some degree. Man, if if Dwight would have had like LeBron level care for his body and mm. the the love of the game, yeah, I'm not saying he's better, but better than LeBron. I'm just joking. Oh, okay. But <laughs> like, mean, he was, his potential was just he was a freak of nature. Oh yeah, for sure. It was yeah. insane. He was crazy. It was it was what a time to be alive. I know Shaq doesn't like the comparisons, but like. He had I mean, that level of athleticism and yeah. just. But the difference is, is that Shag didn't take care of his body and was still like one of the most dominant players in the world. That's true. And Dwight didn't take care of his body that well and didn't That's really, care. he also didn't really care, which you could yeah. argue that was the same thing about Shaq, right? Like he went and did like Shazam, no, not Shazam, Kazam. Kazam. And uh, uh, what's a black, no, Black Steel? Blue Steel? Steel? No, Blue Steel's the uh, Derek Zoolander look. I don't know what. <laughs> I think it's called Black Steel. Okay. Um, but yeah, so those are the stories about Orlando that I could find. There might be some other good ones, but because it didn't start till so late, there's not quite as many like crazy, crazy ones as there are with other places. But we'll get back to those next time we make a podcast. I have some in the hopper. I and it have... all ends. It all ends with Dwight Howard currently on uh, Dancing with the Stars this season. Just, oh, just started last that. week. Wow. You watch Dancing with the Stars? I, I don't, but my wife was telling me about it. Oh, okay. Fair enough. She said that the shortest, uh, like, there's professional dancers that partner with the uh -huh. celebrities. Yeah. He got the shortest of all of the people. They did it on purpose. And so instead of holding, like, around his shoulder, she holds his elbow. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they dance together. Incredible. Because she can't Incredible. reach. Incredible. All right, so sources for this episode, we got Nets Daily, ESPN, Basketball Reference, Sports Illustrated, Ball is Life, The Washington Post, The Gaston Gazette, Orlando Sentinel, and USA Today. So anything else you want to say before we sign off? Uh, thank you to Michael Beasley. <laughs> what a guy. I mean, look, he's a K-State guy, but... I like I like bees. He's, also, kind of like Bill Walker. You remember Bill Walker? Not a. Oh, no. he played. He played with uh, bees at uh, K State. Okay. And I think he was supposed to be good, but it didn't happen. 
All right. We will see you guys next time. Goodbye.